Hey, good doc back again once again. Let's go ahead and lock in. Shout out to the IPA, International Passport Association and Affiliates. All my good stuff, good docs, good books, ebooks, all my shit listed in the links in the description area below. Appreciate y'all for getting y'all. So, right? Today I want to talk about a very, very important topic to me. Something that I think that all of my fellow passport brethren, expats included, need to take into consideration. But more so my newbies that are traveling. And I think this is probably the most important because it's something that you're never going to know about it until you're actually in it. There is an abundance of options when you go abroad, right? Now, you hear me say that a lot. You hear a lot of uh, fellow travelers say that a lot. Uh, when it comes to traveling and dealing with overseas women, there is an abundance of options, right? Whether you choose to utilize online dating sites, um, whether you choose to utilize just dating in person, you're going to understand that there's a lot more options, probably than you had in the United States. Now, that doesn't mean that you were not able to get women in the United States. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that when you go overseas, like Tupac said, all eyes on me, right? <laughs> it kind of feels that way. Even though it's not all the eyes, a greater majority of the eyes are going to be on you. So when you're traveling and you're dealing with women overseas, I say this again so that you understand there's going to be abundance of options. And when it comes to having these options, options that you may not have had prior to traveling outside the country, it is pertinent that you put filters on the types of women you choose to deal with. Now, I will admit, I didn't filter in the beginning, right? The reason I didn't filter in the beginning is because, again, you never know what you're going to like until you're in the midst of it, right? And as you start dealing with certain women or certain types of young ladies, you'll start to realize, okay, I can rock with this, but I really can't rock with that. I can deal with this, but I really can't deal with that. You'll start to understand that part. But in reality, if you don't set filters, you'll just start dealing with anything. And to be honest with you, you don't have the time to really deal with everything. No matter how much you try, you can't have them all, number one. We could try, but you can't. That's number one. And number two, it's gonna start to become a headache for you to have to deal with certain types of women that you know you should have filtered out in the beginning. Maybe they said something in a message to you or maybe said something to you in conversation that really turned you off, but yet and still you thought you could get over it. In reality, you don't have to settle and or get over shit because of the abundance of options that a lot of foreigners have when they travel overseas. When you have these options, it actually becomes more of a challenge and a heartache and a headache than you normally would have to deal with. So when I say you have to apply filters, more or less, you got to have standards and you have to set those precedents and you have to set those standards and you can't budge on them for shit. The beauty in having options is the fact that you can and you are allowed to set those standards in the United States, heaven forbid. You set standards for women and they over here trying to tell you you're shaming and phobics and all types of shit. That's okay overseas. If you don't want to deal with a certain type of woman that's like this, that, the other, you don't have to. And nobody's going to shame you for it, right? But the beauty and ability to travel abroad and the beauty and ability of having options and abundance of it is, like I said, you can set those filters. I like this in a girl. I like that in a girl. Uh, I don't want to deal with this, you know, and you can feel comfortable saying that shit out loud. You can feel comfortable in sharing in what you like and what you don't like. Because at the end of the day, if they don't fuck with you or they don't rock with you or they like, oh man, he ain't for me, guess what? They're not going to mess with you. They're not going to talk to you. And at the end of the day, you've completely eliminated a potential prospect that wasn't something that you wanted in the first place. But I do believe that where most men go wrong and where most men fail is the fact that they fail to have standards and they fail to put filters on types of things they're willing to deal with and not. So I do believe that as a man, do your homework, right? Do your homework. Figure out what you're good with and what you're not good with. I think you should start with your absolute no-no's. For me, that's three things. I think I've shared with you guys this before, but my absolutely no can do's, I can't deal with women who smoke, can't deal with women with bad teeth or fucked up feet. Those are my three. Those are my three. I cannot under any fucking circumstances budge on those three things. If you smoke, I can't rock with you. I might smash you, but don't try to kiss me because I'm never going to kiss you. 
right? That's that, that that was past Mike. Let me make sure I preface that. Um, number two, if your feet are bad or your teeth are bad, bad teeth, bad breath, it all goes hand in hand for me. So those are the things that I refuse to budge on. And every man needs to have those types of filters set for them. So let's say, for example, I meet a young lady online, hypothetically, um, <laughs> and I meet her online. We meet in person and she has one of my three no-nos. I, I just end the date, right? Or I just end it, period, right? Nowadays, you really ain't even got a date if you don't really want to. Just, you know, meet him at a coffee shop, see if it's worth your time, effort, and energy. If she's willing to come back and hang out with you, cool. If she's not, you keep it pushing. I mean, sometimes we've gotten to that part of the society or we've gotten to that part where we really don't have to worry about doing shit like that anymore if we don't want to. But I do believe, like I said, where most men fail is that they, I mean, where most men go wrong when it comes to dealing with women overseas is they fail to put filters on them. They fail to check negative things that they're not willing to deal with. Again, you can have a plethora of positives, but if she don't tick off all the positives or whatever the fuck, it's not the end of the world, right? But you have to have your no-nos, the ones that I will not deal with you at all, regardless of what you say and or do, because I can't get over these. You got to have them. Like I said, I got my three. There's probably more, but those are the three that I really focus on the most. Um, but then when you actually start to you know, understand what you like and what you dislike, what tends to happen is now you can start telling women what you do like in a woman or what you are looking for in a young lady. And it doesn't necessarily have to be somebody you're looking to spend the rest of your life with. It could just be somebody that you're looking to just casually meet and have fun with and spend a good amount of time with and, you know, talk to, get to know if you care to, or, you know, casually have a situation. But if you don't have those filters and you don't set those standards, you're going to basically fall for anything like my man used to say and this is a very common phrase if you stand for nothing you'll fall for everything and that's true and that comes with women too and a lot of you passport dudes you're just so used to I'm mean, sorry not used to it but you're not used to women talking to you or giving you any time effort or energy and when they do you just don't know what to do and I get that and I understand that what I'm saying comes with experience it comes with um you know, spending time in the country and dealing with certain types of women. So I'm not saying that you're automatically going to be on that vibe, but I'm telling you, it, it's, it's, it's a good idea to at least have that in the back of your mind. Because if you don't, what tends to happen is you're going to start dealing with a bunch of women and you're just going to just be overwhelmed with it to the point where it's going to either get boring, you're going to get mad, you're going to get tired, you're going to get frustrated, you're going to find things to be challenging, dating, and it could potentially turn you off of the entire situation because you didn't set your filters, right? Some of us just like to wing it. Let me see what's going on. Let's see how we can figure this out. A lot of us don't have time to wing it. So if that's the case for you, set your filters, speak your mind, tell the truth. You ain't got a lot of these girls anymore put it in your profile if you want to talk that truth to them in public if you need to or in text message just to make sure that you know it's really communicated the way that you want to and keep it pushing and keep it rocking that's my time effort and energy ladies and gentlemen i don't need to dive in a little bit more if you need me to i will but i don't feel like it's necessary i think y'all get the point y'all pick up what the good docs put down but y'all take care man y'all stay blessed doc is out peace